century superhuman And I know that the answers are inside Yeah, I am a 21st century superhuman Now, now, now is the time Come, come Come on, everyone, let's celebrate We are the children of the sun I can see it when I look into your eyes We are the same, and we are light, and we are one Hear now, hear my ancient prayer and sing along We are awakening as one we can make a difference Yeah, we can be the change it takes To make the world a lot more fun But if you're feeling kind of down And you need some inspiration To remember who you are Oh, now, child, please don't frown You can choose a new vibration And these words can take you far First century superhuman And I know that the answers are inside We know each other from being involved with the Kesh movement, right? And what right. an amazing wave of information and connecting a lot of us that was and has been. I mean, we're looking back at 2014, 2015, yeah, almost 10 years ago. It's amazing. Wow, is that possible? And I know. And you wow. brought this revolution to us in South Africa. It was so incredible, those workshops. It was. It was incredible. It was so fun, so soul touching, so connecting, you know. I know. And, and interestingly enough, I just, um, my mom went and got some GANs um, from one of the South Africans that have had, you know, has kind of taken it forward and done a nice. lot of work with it. So it's developed. Mm -hmm. um, some people have done cosmetic ranges with right. With, um gans you know the one lady i think i've heard from her several times that did that eileen eileen yeah her name eileen did the, the quantum range it's mm -hmm. beautiful mm, fabulous so it's amazing and tom salas is still over here in mexico making these amazing necklaces and different things that people can wear that are protective items and he takes he puts the stuff in water in the freezer and takes pictures of it and there's these explosive oh, wow. fields coming off of it so it's really neat wow yeah, yeah i had so much fun with that um with Me that too. journey i mean i i made i made gans tubes that i was selling to people yeah. that, that they could wear around their bellies and then yes. i was selling them in barley with such a stone and yeah. people were dancing you know at his place with them on and loved them and i mean it was just it's very creative actually yes and the, i love yeah. the the one of you guys from the airport where you had um you had yes. been wearing the them in the imprint in the machine that was amazing yeah the magnetic memory of the bracelet even though we didn't right. have the bracelet on it was still right. showing yeah very cool so you've amazing. been dry fasting and what took you on this journey which is really really okay. really interesting <laughs> to me personally um i would love to just live without food you know it seems like a real option but i think we have some evolution to go in this physical body to get there but i'm really curious i've done fasting i've done up to seven day water fasting um but it's been a long time i haven't done any recently and um but i do intermittent fasting so i eat you know between a certain number of hours in the day maybe six hours and then the rest of it is fasting in a 24-hour period so that's another interesting way to lighten up things on the body. But I'm really excited mm. to hear what you've learned and what you've been doing. Yeah, so I'll just share a bit of my story. Um, so I ran into chronic health issues um, sort of over the last four or five years. And 
it just wasn't getting better. So I was trying all the different options, like, you know, so it's, 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 uh, the diagnosis was chronic Lyme and co-infections. And, um, I was trying many, many different things. And, and really the thing feeling is, terrible. You've, you've done so many great things too. I mean, you were using the Therify, Dan Winters Therify hmm. regularly, right? And, yes. Uh, and all your exposure to the plasma products. And hmm. were you vegetarian or what was your... Um, I was vegetarian for a long time, for 20 years um, growing up. But um, at some point, I made a change of my diet. And so, um, you know, change, just made a change. So no, not, not, not anymore. Not but I, I don't, I don't, uh, it's, meat is not a big feature for me. Uh-huh. So, and I had just told you also that I started keto about nine months ago. And that's been really beneficial mm. for me, getting more protein, less carbs, and a dance with that after many years of being pure vegetarian and vegan and for me it's mostly including fish but um mm. but anyway that's a whole other subject so yeah and and maybe we can touch on it like we can because it, it weaves in the whole um the refeeding of the body and the, you know like for me learning how to feed my body correctly because this particular doctor that I sought out um, is a Siberian expert. Uh, he's been dry fasting in the Russian hospitals for 40 years. Wow. And has learned from all the masters. Wow. You know? And of course, they are very open-minded in Russia. They've actually got technology, you know, like right. ancient, ancient practices that are still yes. running. Yes. And I, anyway, I can't wait to share a little bit about this Dr. Filinoff, Sergei Filinoff, because in the, the dry fasting field is quite um, small. I would And so would the guess. names, you know, it's yeah. like Dr. Sergei Filinoff, who was my doctor, is one of the very important names. And I've even got, I took his book out. Um, it's not the greatest translation. There are some mistakes, but right. it's a very good book. Can, can you, you get that on get Amazon? It? Yeah, nice. yeah. Dry fasting by Sergey Filinov is his name. Right. I'll have to check and, that out. Very uh, good. There's a little picture of him. That was when he was a lot younger. Oh. Some of the hospitals, but he's he's an incredible, unbelievable shamanic, intuitive medical, wow. you know, well trained doctor, and very very experienced. Um, but also this heart of gold, mm. absolutely loves his people into life and works with his two daughters and they're in his team mm. you know his dry fasting retreat team and so what would you amazing. what were your symptoms that drew you to do this because you said you were wrestling with Lyme but what were you yeah missing? still in the middle of it um oh my god I was so sick I have still got massive really chronic symptoms um so I'm still on the path but um you look great you're thank you very <laughs> much <laughs> you know that's one of the things that people say with the you know the lime unfortunately it doesn't always look like right you, you're not always looking like you have suffering you know yeah one of the things um, I learned just as a aside in my studies is that stevia 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 the um, non-glycemic sweetener, but it's leaves mm. that grow in South America. I don't know if it grows in Africa, but mm. um, it actually will go through the blood brain barrier and it will, it can clear um, things that are hiding in the cells, which is what Lyme does. It mm. hides in the body. And um, yeah, so yeah. it's an interesting, yeah. neat, uh, useful tool, I think. Yeah, so I mean, chronic Lyme, you know, I, I mean, there's different manifestations of it. Um, different people are in different places, but um, it's it's can be extremely difficult to to resolve. Right. You know, so um, there's quite a a deficit of of people coming through and finding healing, but there are you know, there are cases where people are finding their way through it. 
And I, I just wasn't. Um, and there was just so many things piling up. So a lot of trauma, a lot of um, change. Uh, and then I was trying to take, you know, I, was, I tried everything. I tried uh, aromatherapy. I tried skio. I tried homeopathy. I tried natu naturopathy. I tried antibiotics. Um, you know, and uh, I have been over years trying to heal and I just right. got extremely desperate. Um, yeah, I think a lot of these things have also been amplified in laboratories. So yeah, we're not even dealing with absolutely. an original uh, micro. No, yeah. absolutely not. Yeah. So I just in December, I just sort of prayed. I was like, please, God, you know, you have to actually send me something because I am really struggling and um, the podcast of Michelle Slater who is the woman who recovered from her chronic uh, late stage Lyme through dry fasting with Dr. Filinoff she wrote a book on it mm. and um, I found it and it was it was like it just really called me so I read the book and I found out that there were retreats and I went to one of the retreats in March, April, and I'm just about to go back for another retreat. Mm. And Soon. you will go, do you go to Russia to do that or? No, it's, they, they're hosting in Russia, but also in, um, in Europe for, uh -huh. for the European community, because it's not that easy um, with the politics that's going on with, you know, for Europeans and that to get into Russia. Mm. I would love to go. He's got this magical place in Russia where mm -hmm. he really uses the water, the rivers, you know, um, the mountains as an energetic source because you really feed on the prana, the pranic quality oh, of the I'm I mean, sure, yeah. You become I'm absolutely sure. one with it, you know. Yes. And this yeah. field is really designed for us to receive our energy from it. I mean, that's part of the idea of that we're living in it. We're living in much more than just a 3D world. We're living in a multifaceted, energetic, dimensional existence, really. And mm, um, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I started to research breatharianism um just to kind of get my mind because you you have to switch your mind you know right. to a yes. different dial and so I was interested you know how do the breatharians do it um and Nassim Haramein is one of the people that has been a breatharian for years actually really yeah no not anymore okay. but when he, he when he was doing it he was living on his own in a van and just like communing with the cosmos and getting all these right. downloads and nice like, and i've spent time with jazz muheen um oh, actually you? actually back around y2k like 2000 um in okay. mount shasta she was there oh wow um, teaching and i ended up at the events that were there for the big y2k uh okay you know, wow stuff that went on and um yeah so it's very interesting to me um, yeah, I think at some point we'll switch. I think we will we'll too. Switch I into think that. Energy. Those who are there in consciousness, I think it's a consciousness choice. Yeah, right? like a pranic, um, a pranic feeding. I think so, and I think we'll always have the choice to, you know. I mean, I, I can imagine in other atmospheres, you know, we'll be different, really yes. different. We won't be as dense as we are here on Earth. So I think yes. there's a lot of, you know um deep deep change on a cellular level going on well can you share a little bit of what your experience was like to dry fast mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'd love sure. to hear and um yeah you know because we have this programming that says you know you can only live a day without water right that's like the you know where are our fears that are built around the structure of this reality that may may be false. Um, and mm. I think you're breaking through some of that. So this is nine days without water or food, no contact with water, no brushing your teeth, no bathing, no showering, nothing, no contact. And um, 
it's medically supervised, so you wouldn't want to try and do anything like this at home. <laughs> um, right. But yeah. he has been working with this model for, you know, many, many decades and with extreme success. So it's, it's not as straightforward um, as it seems. It's actually a, a really a big journey because there's a lot of adjustments. I'm sure. You know, depending on how strong um, you are, how many adjustments you need to make. But anyway, let me, so let me share a little bit of, so I flew to Montenegro, which is where the retreat was being hosted. And there were 30 people from all over the world. Wow. It was a beautiful setting. And it was the first time I'd flown for, for I mean, since I think 2013. So probably, I don't know, I don't think I'd flown overseas, you know, for that long, 10 years. Mm -hmm. uh, so you prepare for your fast um, with specific sort of instructions um and then so i had a time i'm sure you're cleansing at some level right before you go yes, into yes lighting yeah, up yeah. your diet etc yeah. yes yes you do colon and liver cleanses and a couple of months of preparation and you have to consult with the doctor beforehand and tell him what it is that you're dealing with and you know how how, how many pills you're on because you have to come off everything Mm. Um, in order to fast and yeah like I said it's a big journey um, it's a big cleanup journey so um, so I got there and I had two days before the retreat started where you have to start your dry fast so you you know start start dry fasting and um and then the doctor gives talks every day, um, just really telling you what it is that's important. You know, movement is really important. Um, you know, understanding what healing is happening, how you, you know, like it's motivation, really. And right. then there's treatments as well every day. Mm. And we also did video testimonials of how we were you know, every day telling a little piece of our story. And um, you're very held and there's a slipstream of consciousness that it, it's not as hard as it seems, you know, mm -hmm. when you say it's like your, your consciousness just adjusts and your body moves into um, an internal water source. So you you actually do get water, but it's com coming from the fat and the fat converts into water and then feeds the cells. Wow. Um, and at a certain point, the autophagy starts, which is the, the cells clean up, they sort of um, feed on their own waste matter. The inflammation, right, yes. And they choose dead cells and uh, infected and sort of um alien cells and stuff like that first and so that's the whole point of it that at a certain point you know um there's no external influence it's just everything's being cleaned up from within beautiful you. it's beautiful yeah in this incredible very deep way and it triggers all sorts of stem cell um, regrowth and right. reboot mm -hmm. in the system and then you have a very monitored when you once you've reached the nine days um, you have a very carefully monitored exit period that's what I was thinking because water. that's been my difficulty I think when I fasted in the past it always seems so extreme to me and then I you know, overdo when I come out of it. So, you know, how do you stay on a really gentle uh, recovery or return to whatever your norm is going to be? Mm. Yeah, so, you know, the exit is the most crucial thing. It's it's like 75% of, of the 
healing process. So that's a large part of why you go is so that you monitored in your exit. Some people need to exit, you know, if, if they get really, if they're really, really sick and they get really, really bad symptoms, they need to have a doctor who has an expertise there to say, okay, you can stop your fast, you can come off it, or you can continue. Mm -hmm. yeah, and there's yeah. specific mar markers for that. Um, and then you need at least sort of four days of supervised exit before you can sort of take over your own refeeding program. Mm. And, and it, it becomes a little bit of a practice, you know, it's yes. like um, throw away all your supplements, resupplement yourself through food, specific foods. Right. Um, there's a whole, yeah, a whole world to learn about really. and you know we've done that with um with going at keto we did what we called burn the ships you know we just got everything out of our house that was off track for us and pretty much we're eating vegetables and protein and it's really doing us both good um and mm -hmm. so i think that idea of making a change that's so big because culturally you know, we're being fed information by the companies that are making processed foods and um, overindulgence. I've always said, you know, overindulgence is the bane of our society. Really, what we really need to learn to do, unless we're living in a really poor nation, um, but in general, in the more uh, cultivated world, learning to say no is our biggest. Um, no, that's enough. No more of that, you know. Uh, and to just enter into a yes that is very pure and clean and clear. And um, I love it that you're doing this. I just feel, I feel, I've been feeling inspired just hearing about it from you, little glimpses in, in the distance. And um, so thank you for talking about it because I think it's- Yeah, amazing. thank you. That's, I mean, if there's, you know, if there's anyone who's interested in it, a good place to start is Michelle Slater's book. And that's also right. available on um on amazon to download you know in the Kindle and do you know edition. what that book is cost, called it's oh. it's called starving to heal okay in siberia um let me just double check i did send it to you starving to heal in siberia you did right see. i'll put it under the video <laughs> yeah who late who who radical recovery from late stage lyme and it's really well written and it's, nice. it gives you a very good idea of what the dry fasting entails. So what about, do you, was there any fear you had to deal with when you initially went into it um, or, or the people in general who are going into it? Um, um, I mean, what psychologically do you have to deal with to go into that kind of shift? Or did you just feel like you were in the arms of someone who was knew what they were doing and you just trusted and were confident of that i mean carrie i think what happened to me and, and i think there there are a lot of people not everybody but there are a lot of people that show up um at, at something like that who are desperate right. really desperate mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. you actually really in a state of desperation you like you know um looking for something that is you know outside of the box um and so at some point you know when you you know you kind of it's like well death or dry fast <laughs> that's right yeah you know <laughs> which I, one do you want I've been it's a bit too. like that yeah. it's, a, it's a journey right. a very you know i think a lot of people who are dealing with lyme and you know have, and including myself have had a very long dark night of the soul journey for, for right. various different reasons mm -hmm. And um, and so in a way, you you well, I, I I don't know. I can't really think about fears as much as just like I'm here because I really right. really want to find my way. Right. Yeah. So I mean, and and like I said, it's not a straightforward solution. Um, it's not without its challenges. You've got to become very disciplined. You've got to make changes on many levels in your life. Um, you know, like uh, what's good is, uh, you know, in, in a way, there's a lot of different people that you meet in, mm -hmm. in retreats. 
that have been working on themselves through dry fasting for years, mm. you know, and they've done many and, wow. and not, you know, it's not just like one or two necessarily to get better. Um, I mean, there was one woman who I think she did six or seven, something like that, and also healed herself from Lyme. Eventually. How does the, the doctor that you worked with, how does he live? Does he, does he periodically dry fast every year with his patients or does he? Yeah. So uh, once, once you're in a healthy state, you have kind of like a maintenance dry fasting um, protocol. There's all sorts of different protocols, which is for somebody who's healthy, they, they kind of recommend like once a year to do a long fast and then some people do weekly, like a one day or a 36 hour, something like that. And then sort of every three months, maybe three days. Um, so there's all sorts of protocols that, that people For use. like living. And then does, living. Mm. And does he recommend, what kind of diet does he recommend? He's amazing. He loves nature. He just says nature has all the answers for us. And if we can stay close to the model of nature so he he's he he's like an unbelievable expert in food mm. so he'll teach you you know about all sorts of things but basically he loves fish he says fish can give you a very complete um That's many neat. things it's feeling very um, good to me it's feeling very harmonious and helpful yeah so he likes fish but then he is you know also russian siberian right <laughs> yeah like the russian bear you know yeah. fishing from the river uh -huh. so and um just trying to think you know how so what are you doing like what's your daily life like now that you've and you're gonna getting ready to go do another one so and right. for instance, so he's said, fine with coffee. He's fine with coffee. He says coffee is very good for the liver. The liver is. loves coffee. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, it's got really great antioxidants and enzymes in it that the liver needs. And, you know, um, apparently when, when coffee meets with the liver, it creates a glutathione reaction. So it actually releases glutathione. I, I kind of know system. that from the Gerson therapy from using it in that yes very good yeah and he recommends red wine because of also um resveratrol map kinase enzymes things mm -hmm. like that just but all in balance and in right. moderation and um so my diet is uh oats with uh, cacao and um pumpkin seeds and a bit of honey in the morning after I have coffee and um and then like a sip a, some a smoothie he also loves quail's eggs quail's mm -hmm. eggs um also provide a very complete uh diet you know many many um vitamins. simpler cultures oh, simpler cultures use those I bet yeah mm -hmm. and so I'll do a smoothie and then maybe a, you know, some, something like a fish soup or something like that. Nice. So very light. You're eating very light in between. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's, you know, you learn, you get exit, um, specific exit formulas. Yeah. So you'd exit after a diet with, um, you know, water very slowly at a specific time um give your body time to rehydrate slowly not too fast and right. then you would add um a fermented drink like kefir also very slowly and then um compote which is a, a specific russian sort of mix like apricots and apples and um prunes and raisins in hot water and that Compot is actually really important for the brain after dry fasting for the mm. glycogen, I think. Interesting. The brain needs some glycogen. Very good. To, wow. to get going again. And then you yeah, light soups and stuff like that. And that's what I mean. So it's I quite think, an art. And yeah. I, I'm still very much a beginner. Very much a beginner. And I think it's, it's that's really what. 
that's what I'm doing as well. Like on the simplification, like I just don't really want heavy foods anymore. Everything I eat is very light, very simple, and um, it feels much better. I mean, the whole mm -hmm. process. So I think that um, I love hearing about that. And I think it takes yeah, think courage. It takes courage or desperation, right? Yeah, often it's desperation in these times because we really have come through a health crisis and people yes. are scrambling for solutions. Yes, that, yes, that, yes, yes. You know, big pharma as such is not providing. So Overshadowing. Yeah, there's, there's a, lot a huge of... uh, detoxification of the system on so many levels. Yes, you know that is needed, and mm -hmm. I know mm -hmm. a lot of people. There's there's another good resource called um, the Dry Fasting Club, mm. um, and this guy has been experimenting with dry fasting to help himself recover from long COVID. You know, and nice. he he has very specific protocols and videos out nice um weekly good you know, to know about YouTube. yeah the dry fasting club i mean the difficulty with dr philanoff is he doesn't speak english ah so it's all through a, a translator uh -huh. and um you know and i mean he is just a wealth of knowledge so you sit there in one lecture after the next for absorb 12 days. Mm. listening to this knowledge just pouring out and it's multi-dimensional you know in terms Beautiful. of health so when you I think go ahead when, I just want to say this because you know I, I, what's very important about the nine days the eight and nine days is that for disease you get the state of um the cellular heat fire that mm. starts a burn and that burn um is the thing that you aiming for so you your body gets very hot and that uh, sort of creates wow um, interesting like how many scorched, like a scorched um effect you know it burns you're kind out. of burning out the the draw bacteria the, and that, yeah, yeah the, the disease really right mm. and how so many days does it take for. to go into that so that's on the ninth day wow yeah and like i said um it's very important to remember that first of all i'm not the doctor you know he would have very specific things to say and every single person is different you know every single person is case by case he listens to you and depending on who you are you know your case would be nuanced right very cool. Well, listen, um, I think we're just about out of time. So yeah. I'm going to just thank you for sharing. This is really fascinating. I've been just longing to hear from you uh, what your experience has been and just learn a little bit from it. I think it's really fascinating. Thank you. And maybe I should, we should also just link um, the, the woman that does the translation for Dr. Filanoff's events. She's got a website of all, all okay. of his events Great. and stuff like that. I think it's yeah. health, healthuniverse.com or something like that. Um, we'll look it up and if you send to, it to me, we'll put it under the video. Right. Great. Yeah. Anyway, so thank you so much for being interested you know and and you never yeah. know who who it could reach and yes. there's so many angles to come in on this work thank so you for it's, sharing it's, it's a very deep clean it's it's very multi-dimensional these old emotions that come out it's just unbelievable how much memory we store in ourselves that is absolutely true i know it for a fact and um mm -hmm. and on a mo more moderate scale the things i'm doing with keto and intermittent fasting, I think are on a more gradual basis, bringing out similar things. So, but I love yeah. this. I love the extreme. I love the, um, you know, I, one really quick question. You said um, if he does them in Russia, he does them in this really beautiful place and there's water. And so are you actually, in? if he does it in Russia, are you actually getting in the water even though you're not no. drinking water? No, you're just in no. the environment. Yeah, yeah. So you, you, um, the the environment is really important because ideally you want, want mountains and rivers close right. to where you're fasting because you you are um, taking the water out of the environment. Nice. 
Mm. Yeah. Well, Amanda, so much love to you and thank love you. Love so you lovely you to so yeah, lovely to see you again and you hear too. from you. And I know um, we've all had many stories over the last yes. four years and big journeys. We'll share more as we go along here. Let's do some more of this because it's just Absolutely. really good to talk yeah, about. Yeah, and it. maybe I'll 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 connect with you for a follow-up after my next fast, which will be yes. coming up in October. Okay. Beautiful. I would love to have you do that when you are back in your rhythm of being clear. Right, having landed. Yes. <laughs> All right. Much love. Mm. Thank you, Carrie. Lots of ciao, love ciao. to you. Adios. Bye. We'll talk soon. Okay. Bye bye. And if you're feeling kind of down and you need some inspiration to remember who you are, whoa, now, child, please don't frown. You can choose a new vibration and these words can take you. I am a 21st century superhuman and I know that the answers are inside I am a 21st century superhuman Now, now, now is the time